Good morning, folks. Top story today is from the Hypothesis Articles. We're at the bottom of the sea where scientists believe electrical currents at the bottom of the ocean resulting from an elegant and unavoidable harmony of electrobiochemistry can create new life. Definitely got to read that one. Also, halfway through each month, we get the State of the Climate Report for the previous month. March was a true story of climate extremes. Temperature. You can see we had the coldest March on record for parts of the Northeast, but year to date we still see extremes with the warmest on record recorded in the Southwest. Monthly and year to date precipitation totals mirror that scatter plot of extremes. When we come city by city, the range and type of extreme climate event becomes apparent. When scrolling through these temperature rankings, you see both red and blue, including a few absolute records falling that have lasted multiple decades. By the statistics, the deviations from normal to the colder side won the winter, but climate extremes indeed includes all sides of the weather. You see precipitation totals all over the place as well. One of the most important aspects to note this winter was the Great Lakes ice extent. You can see the red dot showing where this year is going to be plotted. Folks, this is more ice than we've seen since the late 70s, 35 years. Rounding up today's articles at NASA's Earth Observatory, their focus falls on the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia where no less than five volcanoes are active. We have recently also seen Alaska and South America witness increases in volcanic activity along with the western and southern regions of Indonesia, and we also now have sister mountains on alert in the Philippines. Remember folks, they've also been quiet there quake-wise, but that should change as the typhoons return. We'll start the weather watch in Africa where at least 15 people are dead and far more homes were destroyed by catastrophic rainfall totals. Look at the precipitable water launched atop that region from the Indian Ocean. Coming next to the Southwest Pacific, all eyes are to the combined system heading for New Zealand. The remnants of the cyclone is arriving with another load that's been absorbed into the circulation. Apart from a thunderstorm chance in the Mediterranean and snow to the north, it's a lighter day in Europe. Same goes for the U.S. We do have a low dead center, but it's not terribly powerful. There are no major warnings tonight, and nothing you folks can't handle here. We'll start space weather with a 48 hours view of the developing sunspots. We watched two baby sunspot groups born before our eyes, followed by an astounding explosion of umbral cores, spreading, and morphing to mix magnetics. They have even appeared to inspire some complexity in the older, larger group coming in behind the young guns. When we take a look at the entire sun, we see that the earth-facing quarter is a minefield. The active regions to the north are still so benign, no flaring, ejecta, or magnetic mixing, but the southern groups have it, and the southern baby spot is now the king of the earth-facing disk. We see delta potential where positive and negative meet in all three southern groups, but the far incomer we've identified already appears confined to a minor area only. We also notice a lateral setup incoming on the north. Despite the spot increase, we saw no real flare increase. We didn't get up to M range like I thought we would, although we were highly active in the C range. Before the solar weakening described in the first link you will find before this video, this type of sunspot setup was popping X-class solar flares daily. Now we can't even get an M. Remember Lockheed Martin's affirmation of three years of our observations. It's not just that there are fewer sunspots, they are less active sunspots. This is what some scientists believe will disrupt our stratospheric flows and create terrible winters. The next coronal hole faces Earth today and continues for two days. It would have been a major quake watch except that the new sunspots have stolen most of the power of the opening. It's of moderate force only. Condition index for seismicity is slightly elevated today after a few days of lower earthquake index and lower levels of earthquakes compared to the previous week. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.